without a doubt, the most common question I get is, I don't know how to read this dyno sheet. Where do I need to set my shocks? We don't mind helping you, telling you where to set your shocks, but we also want to educate you so you know how to read your dyno sheet because it is a vital part of how your race car performs. So in this video, we're going to break down what you should focus on, what all the squiggly lines mean, and make it real simple for you to learn how to read your dyno sheet. So right now, what we're looking at is a force versus velocity graph. This is a very common graph that we will provide. It simplifies the data you're given. Any positive number is going to be your compression and any negative number is going to be your rebound. And then along the bottom, this is your velocity. So this doesn't mean moving the shock in three inches. It means it's moving three inches per second of speed. As you can see, all of our adjustment on this particular adjustable shock is on the positive force side. So this is a compression adjustable shock. Most commonly that you should look at is your three inch per second number. So if you simply go over to the three on the bottom and then up uh, the negative number, that's gonna be your rebound, which you can see here is roughly 180 pounds of rebound. And then the stiffest compression setting is uh, maybe 150 or so. If you wanna actually look at the raw data, that's provided for you as well. So here on the raw data, you can see your three inch uh, compression, 149.7, I had guessed 150, and 179.5, I'd guessed 180. Uh, you can tell I've looked at a lot of dyno sheets. So your three inch number is the most important. Now you have all these squiggly lines on that first sheet, right? All these lines, what is all this stuff? Well, these are all the different settings. Um, so we dynoed this shock, as you can see in the legend, at full stiff, 10 clicks open, 12, 14, 16, and so on until we got to full soft, and you see that nice incremental adjustment range. So on your data sheet, the first line will say full stiff. It'll give you your, your data. The second line, minus 10, you can see the rebound has um, essentially stayed the same. It went from 179.5 to 179.7 but our rebound or our compression has went from 149 to 138 so it's getting softer as you look at the next two clicks open we're at 129 and then 119 um, and we're still right around uh, 179 180 on rebound we recommend that you look at your three inch per second number on all four corners of your shock except for your left rear that is where we're going to want to really focus in on your rebound close zero number, and then your one inch per second. Why is that important? The shock does not move that fast in the rebound direction on the left rear. Um, in our core markets, micros, midgets, sprint cars, we run a lot of rebound. So it doesn't move super fast in the rebound. Now, if you're working on a dirt modified, a dirt late model, they're opposite. They run a lot of compression and not a lot of rebound. So um, the one inch isn't as important on, a, on those vehicles. but. Micros, midgets, sprint cars, 90% of the shocks we build are for those vehicles and quarter midgets. Uh, we look at three inch per second on your left front, your right front, your right rear, your left rear. We also look at the one inch and the zero rebound closed on rebound only on that left rear. Hope that simplifies things for you. As always, if you have any questions, shoot us an email, we're happy to help.